what I'm going to do in this video <coughs> today is compare the PA0 RDT Mini Whip, which you can see here, mounted on the balcony, that thing, just the tip, and compare that with the homemade loop antenna, which I've currently tuned to 14 megahertz, 20 meters, which is this loop here. I've optimized this uh, match. Now it's a tap match connected <coughs> just to the top of the loop, seems to work best. It's quite a small diameter, but it gives one to one SWR. And it's tuned here to 14 megahertz. And then the third antenna is the uh, metal railing all along there, which works a little bit like a long wire. And there is the long wire, the red and black wire comes into the room here where I have an ATU for the long wire and this is <coughs> power battery for the mini whip there's the supply power injector for the mini whip this battery generates a bit of noise but not much certainly better <coughs> than using a mains power supply it seems and then it all comes into here which is of course the um, SDR play software SDR Uno running under Windows, currently looking at 14 megahertz. So this in here is the FT8 signals on 14 megahertz. And I'm using the resonant loop antenna. <clears throat> and you can see there's a nice healthy signal to noise ratio. If I switch the mini whip, which is antenna A, by clicking, then you see that actually the signal level reduces a little bit. The noise floor induces, increases quite a bit more. <clears throat> so there's a lower signal to noise ratio, but then don't forget this mini whip is a broadband antenna that starts at a few kilohertz up to many megahertz. So you can't expect an optimized performance. Whereas when I use the loop, then the performance is a bit more optimized. If I zoom out, you can see here's the actual resonance of the loop. These are SSB signals on 20 meters. So the loop is actually tuned over there, not here. <clears throat> it's drifted because of the laundry, that I've put on the, band, uh, the balcony to dry. But as you can see, the, um, the loop gives the best signal to noise ratio on 20 meters. And then second best is this uh, mini whip active antenna. I click on the third antenna type, that's the long wire balcony railing. And as you can see, it doesn't pick up anything. Um, let me see if that's really true. Because it is going through the ATU, okay, it wasn't tuned. Now the ATU is tuned, there's a teeny bit of signal occasionally, but I mean, it's nothing not much use. And if you have a look at some other frequencies, that was 14.074. One of my favorite test frequencies is 10.1 megahertz, the uh, weather service RTTY report. And that's on the mini whip, you can see a nice healthy signal to noise ratio again. And on the uh, long wire antenna, <coughs> you can actually not hear it either. So this long wire is not really producing a lot of signal. But I'm going to use it as the pickup antenna for my MFJ noise cancelling device when that arrives in the post later today. And the loop of course is not optimized. Optimized to 10 megahertz, you can see a bit of signal but it's not tuned there. But where the uh, mini whip really excels, so you go down to, this is going to be now 150 kilohertz, 1.5 megahertz in the broadcast band. And this is on the mini whip and there, yeah, we're listening to AM. There is a medium wave broadcast signal, you can see with quite a healthy signal to noise ratio. There's another one there. Don't know what that one is. This is a German station and I am in Germany. It's not very strong, but it's <clears throat> it's there on the mini whip. If I switch to the long wire, then nothing. I switch to the loop. Actually, there's a little bit of something. So that loop is picking up a bit of a signal and much, much lower noise because the loop is nowhere near resonant at 1.5 megahertz. So the active antenna, this one, is definitely the best. Okay, a lot of noise comes up, the signal level goes up too, and the signal to noise ratio, the difference between these is much higher with the mini whip. And I think this mini whip excels at lower frequencies. If we go down here to, let's say, 130 kilohertz, this is, and I'm going to zoom in a bit, like a time synchronization signal that's used for um, electrical devices synchronizing throughout Europe. It's transmitted in Hungary and Germany and somewhere else, I think. It actually has three peaks at 130, 140, and one in between. They're all sending the same data. And you can see a very large signal, very healthy signal to noise ratio using that mini whip down at 130, 140 kilohertz. So it really excels there. If I look on the long wire, 
Oh, again, there's nothing. That's because the ATU is blocking everything. Still doesn't help. So um, really, there's there's no signal. And of course, the loop might pack a bit of something. No, it doesn't. Even less noise. So of course, the active whip wins. And if I go into the lowest frequency that I've stored, 78, which is really listening to the 77.5 kilohertz DFC 77 signal, <clears throat> the time signal, very accurate and listen to it on lower sideband which is why I choose tune half a kilohertz higher. There's the signal with its pulsing and modulation of DFC 77 on the mini whip, a nice healthy signal which I'm very pleased with and if I switch to the long wire oh, nothing again <laughs> and switch to the loop, maybe a bit of something, not really. So uh, very low frequencies of course the um, Oh, there's the doorbell. Hold on. I'm on the outside of the apartment using a laptop <coughs> for a receiver on the balcony. What I want to show you is uh, what you can do with this mini whip. And it's interesting to know that it's, it was listening to the um, DFC 77 signal when I was indoors because the whip was mounted on the balcony uh, railing. Now I can't hear it. <coughs> if we look at the uh, laptop, you can see that uh, signal's very weak from DFC 77 there's a lot more noise. What I can do is I can use this active whip antenna as a noise detector because if I bring it down towards the laptop you can see the noise increasing. The biggest noise source is here is the uh, trackpad on the laptop. You can see it's very easy to detect where noise is coming from. I'm going to do a video about this later on. Also a big source of noise that I have is this battery. If I bring it close to here and you see all those little spikes coming up. Those are being generated by the inverter in the power supply on the, what do we call them, power bank. So there's a lot of noise sources. Probably the mobile phone is also generating noise if I bring the antenna close to that. But if you look at the DFC 77 signal, there's practically nothing. Let me just turn up the volume on this so that you can hear what happens. So there's the volume increase and uh, there's all the noise. And what I'm going to do now is move this antenna around. And there's a bit more signal. And then I'm going to put it out into the fresh air. You see that as soon as you put the antenna out by a few centimeters outside the building shell, then the signal level really increases. When I bring it back in, that's in the free space inside the balcony. And out there is in the free space on the outside of the building. And I'm only moving it by about one meter. So I was moving from this position to this position. And it makes a huge change in signal strength, huge increase. Because the building acts as a Faraday shield because it has a lot of reinforced concrete, which has steel or iron <coughs> bars or rods in it. And those absorb a lot of signal, especially at lower frequencies. So it shows that just by poking the, uh, the mini whip antenna, just a few centimeters over the edge of the balcony makes all the difference to the received signal strength. It's amazing. So there we are. Something else we learned. More to follow. Remember to like and subscribe. Thank you for listening.